Okay, good day to uh, everybody. So we are going to continue the second lecture for the first week. Uh, so we're going to continue uh, about the uh, theoretical of the microcontroller. So the symbol that we're going to use is micro C over here. And on this uh, uh, slides is basically we are talking about the block diagram, which is uh, just for your information only on how uh, the whole microcontroller is working so you can see that there's a ports and you have the memory you have the CPU you have the modules over here so this is your CPU this is your LU over here so this is your marks everything so uh, this is all the uh, the connections between inside the uh, microcontroller in the block diagram so this is not going to be memorized as long as you understand uh, how to read this one okay let's move on uh, this uh, slide is talking about the internal architectures. So the architecture is very important for you to understand. Okay, this architecture, when you want to build, uh, when they build, not you guys, when they design this one, right? When they design the microcontroller, the, the design is based on two architectures, the internal design, eh? right? The first one, they call it Harvard. Okay, the first one, they call it Harvard. Here, the Harvard architecture and the second one they call von Neumann so only two models been referred for the internal architectures okay uh, so what's the difference is basically is only the difference on the ways of data exchanging between CPU and memory so that is the difference between these two architectures, all right? So you have the differences on the methods of the transferring of data, for example, like this. So this is a two, two difference of the uh, uh, internal architecture just now. The first one is they call it the von Neumann, okay? The communication is slow and inefficient due to the only 8-bit data bus you can see that from this image right from this figure it only has 8-bit of data bus so the data bus is only 8 from here and the connection is between cpu and the memory okay so you have the memory here ram and rom so the connection is only one up uh, between them only all right <coughs> But in this particular architecture, right, it has more instruction sets. So this is about the instruction sets that how how you want to do the programming on the uh, uh, microcontroller. Okay, the second one they call it Harvard. So what that what is the difference that we have over here? It it has two difference of data buses. So you can see a very big uh, difference is uh, instead of only have uh, one memory location which is ROM and RAM together. So it's uh, divide or isolate between these two. So it has its uh, random access memory, which is the RAM. Uh, this is a memory. And this is also another type of memory. So it has different data bus connected from the memory to the CPU. So the Harvard have two different data buses, have less instruction set, which is a lower uh, instruction set that can be used uh, to do this one. So you can see that the, 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 the one is more efficient is of course, it has more uh, data buses between uh, the CPU and the memory. And of course, this is much better because it's isolated or differentiate between the RAM and the ROM. Uh, compared to this, this is actually a combination of the RAM and ROM in memory side. And it used the same bus to talk together to the RAM and ROM. Of course, this is much better in Harvard compared to von Neumann. So this is the architecture, the internal architecture used in developing the uh, microcontroller. Alright? So PIC16F, PIC16F8778. Okay, so you can see that this is the name. And this packaging is also shared by 8778. If you have another one, PIC uh, 16F uh, 8778A, right? So this is PIC 16F 8748A. So this is 7A for 4A7. This is a 8748A. It used the same uh, type of package over here. 
which is has uh, the first pin from here and the final pin at 40 pins over here. Okay, uh, this is what I have been uh, teaching you guys yesterday. And uh, this is related to the, the, the divisions of the pins, the functions of it. So I want you guys to concentrate the pins that I highlighted and I uh, group, group them one by one. So you can see that that is the, the most pin that you're going to use when you do the programming. Okay, so the first one, the first one is they call it the first pin over here. This is a must, you understand? This is the call it master clear master clear so the function is to reset the microcontroller for example you have a robot right okay let's say this is your robot <coughs> you program the robot to move from a to b okay so you push your on button then this robot is moving towards b but before it reaches b it hangs and this robot is not moving anymore. <coughs> so one of the steps is possibly you can do is you can turn off the system or you also can reset the system by giving this one to the low level. I mean, this is, you see, this is master clear. You see, this is bar, master clear bar, which means that it will affect when it will effective when you give a low level which is go to zero volt so you have to build a switch over here when the switch hit zero volt the system will be reset <coughs> okay so that's, that's the first one the second one is the one that i colored for blue color okay so the blue color is related to the pots so you can see here it has the ra0 which is, this is normally used for port A, they call it. It has from A0 <coughs> to, how many over here? To A and 7. Okay, so R means, R means for digital input, output. So over here, it has RA and AN. So AN means, okay, this is part A, eh? R for part A. So AN means for analog input only. Okay. R is for digital input and output. But for AN, it only can receive analog input, which is the source. It's not going to send analog to the output so it means that you're going to receive the data as analog towards inside the cpu so that's the difference over here so which means that in port a for the io over here okay port a can receive digital io input output or it can receive analog input by setting these pins so this pin is very important for you to set before you use it so that's why when you have the A to D converter, <coughs> you need to you need to convert, you need to set the pins whether you're going to receive a digital signal or analog signal. So digital signals is like this, is 0 to 5. And for example, this is 0 volt, right? So this is 5 volt. This is equivalent to logic 1. This is equivalent to logic 0. So this is digital input or output. Means that if you measure, if you measure this pin, for example, that the, the, the output is uh, digital, right? So when you measure the pin, it's going to give you only two values, which is zero, either zero or five volt. <coughs> but for analog, right? For analog, the value may be like this. So you will measure this one, and then you have to know that from this measurement, right? What is the uh, the similar the, the the corresponding value for the digital value? So for simple, this one is going to be five volt, or lower than this is going to be zero volt. So this is the analog values. So port A can be used for either your digital I/O or only for analog inputs. Only. Okay, so that's for port A. Now the next one is port B, which is also input output 
which is over here. Part B is over here. You can see that it also have from RB0 to RB7. So it will need to be have 8 pins over here. Same goes to part A. You have from RA0 up to AN7. So it has 8 pins. <coughs> okay, this is also have 8 pins. Okay. And then you have after part B. Part B, you only see R. Means that part B can only work as digital input and output. Okay. And then what you have here, you have the power. Uh, sorry, we, we just want to complete the I.O. first. Then you have the R.B. Then you have the R.C. over here. Another, another thing. But R.C. over here, you're not going to use uh, up to 8 of pins because it starts from RC0, RC1, RC2, and RC3. So RC, there are 44 pins over here. Sorry, I just, sorry, not 4. C, 5, 6, 7. Okay, still, POP C also have 8 pins. Alright. Uh, let me tell this one. Okay, next one. Uh, then you have part D. Alright, part D is this one uh, from D0. Okay, uh, sorry, from D, D0, D1, and then you have D2. Where is D2? You have to find out from here. D2 here, D3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So part D also. Consists of 8 pins. Okay. Then, the last one is E. Port E. Port E is the one that not having 8 pins over here. So, this is only RE0 to RE2. So, this one is only 3 pins. So, what we can conclude is, is uh, port A, port B, C, D and E. Okay. So, part A you can use for I.O. digital and analog. Whereas, part B, C, D, E. Okay, E here. Okay, A, N. Okay, A, N here. So, this is sharing. Okay, this is sharing over here. You can see that part A is shared between R, E, 0. So, you can see this is 3. And this is also A, N. Right, because this is part A and this is part E shared together, so you can choose which one that you want. So part A is eight pins and shared together with R E as digital. So part B now is only for I O over here, digital I O, and C is also digital I O because R C. Then you have D also I O, and you have. E also I.O. for digital. So this is all digital, no analog. Analog is only part for part A. Okay. Then, uh, what you want to see on this uh, particular uh, pins is this one. This is the most, one of the most important one. The power pins, they call it. VDD and VSS. So means that VDD you must put to 5 volt over here. Right? This one VS you must put to ground. So means that it can power up your microcontroller. And then what else over here? The another pins that share and important for you to understand is this pin at port C. It share at uh here it's not a proxy sorry it's not it's a clock in clock up sharing this is a clock and the last uh, the last one is uh, sorry uh, the one that we shared is here is at part c they call it ccp pins this is to use to control the motor clock pins means it's the one that you are going to put a clock clock means like for example 20 megahertz uh, that's a clock you have to put over here this is a clock pins so Power pins and clock pin is the one that you must connect 
and also the master clear to make sure that the system is working so uh, the one that CCP pins is going to be teach they're going to be taught in the uh, uh, the, 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 the slides for the motors and these pins are used to control the speed of the motor so this is shared together with port C so it means that if you want to use this one you have to set it as what and then to, you can use it to, to generate an impulse or generate a uh, pulse width to control your motor so uh, I would uh, like you guys to look back at these particular pins the one that I group which is the most important one is the IO ports right for example here port A, port B, port C, port D, port E that is the IO right and then you have the power pins power pins and then you have the clock pins and then you have the CCP pins they call it to drive the motor and then the rest uh, this one is the reset button and the rest is about the input output okay this is the thing that you need to keep on reading and understand how to use it later okay so we are not going to use everything at the at the same time so we're going to use maybe one of them maybe one part or maybe two parts okay next one so this is uh, the parts that again when you want to have this one right I, I, I just said just now there are three things that you need to to make sure that it's working here this one the power pins the clock pins and the master clear reset so when you look over here this is talking about the clock clock is this one clock pins so this pin must be connected to make sure that your uh, microcontroller have a signal of a clock if there's no clock signal then you will not know how to do the processing it, it must have the clock signal because it will do the processing based on the clock so there are four types of clocks over here the first one they call it the crystal clock this is the one the common one that we use right now which is this one this is a physical thing about the crystal clock and the diagram is like this okay the next one is RC resistor capacity pair so uh, you can try to figure out uh, find out the, the, the image from the Google RC pair is like this and the ceramic resonator and silicon resonator is uh, something about like this it's just a resonator to resonate and give a pulse for that so uh, you can see that from here right okay so what is this, this one function this is a voltage regulator this is what they call it voltage regulator for example, it will regulate, it will regulate 12 volt going down to 5 volt and from this pin, it can connect to power supply. Sorry, the power pins over here. And then the, another one will go to ground. So this particular regulator is to make sure that your microcontroller receives 5 volt instead of 12 volt. You can draft, draft, you can draft 12 volt but must go through the regulator to make sure that the input for the power pins is only 5 volts. So it means that when you play with microcontroller, you only can receive 5 volt or 0 volt only. This is the, what they call it digital value. This is normally 1, this is 0. So this is a value coming out from the microcontroller. 5 or 0, 5 or 0. That's why when you give 5 volt, the LED will turn on. If you give 0 volt, the LED will turn off. So that is the example. So there are four types of oscillator. So you just must you must know that which type of oscillator and the function of it. So this is just to show you uh, the oscillator, how it oscillates, right? When it receives the power supply, the oscillator will start to oscillate from smaller like this and will start to oscillate in a good uh, in a in standard or in uniform waveform. Right? So even pulses, this is even pulses, which is even pulses and harmonic for the operation. The instructions are not executed at the rate imposed by oscillator but slower. Example, 20 megahertz, but not the execution time at 100, not 50. So this is about uh at oscillation at 20 megahertz, the execution time at 200 nanoseconds, not 50 seconds. For example, it's 1 over 20 megahertz is rated to uh, 50 nanoseconds, but the execution we require up to 200 nanoseconds, which is up to four times of the oscillation over here. Sorry, not oscillation, the uh, the, the execution time. Okay, that's, sorry, the execution time is related to 200 
nanosecond but for the one this one one over 20 this is a uh, uh, frequency right the frequency is here this is the, the one over 20 is a uh, uh, what is it called that um what is one over t is the hertz one over t is this is tempo right? yes this is one over t is tempo so the tempo is 15 nanoseconds but for the operation to be executed it requires up to 200 or more than that is 200 nanoseconds so this is a term we learn we have to learn after this so just now we had learned about the clocks right this is a clock okay the clock and then you have the term for the instruction cycle. So what is this? So what is clock? Okay, what is the clock cycle? Clock cycle is the cycle of time for one oscillation of the clock. So you can see here, this is a clock cycle. This is oscillation, right? So the full one oscillation is from here to here. This is one full, right? And then it go up again another one full so this is one clock cycle okay that is the clock cycle so if you see the oscillations like this so this is one clock cycle and you go another one this is a second clock cycle so that is a clock cycle okay so what is instruction cycle okay instruction cycle just now is the one that you need to Execute instruction, right? So what is the instruction cycle is the instruction cycle is the cycle time For one execution of an instruction. So instruction cycle is the cycle time for one execution So one execution is going to have one instruction cycle So the relationship between this one you can see that this is one instruction cycle inside this one instruction cycle it has four clock cycle you can see that this is one clock two clock three clock and four clock so this is why it says that this one will require up to 200 nanoseconds because this is 50 50 nanoseconds, 50 nanoseconds, 50 nanoseconds. So total up will be 200 nanoseconds. So let's try to look at an example here. 1 over 20 megahertz. Eh? So let's say for example, the system is using uh, a clock with a 20 megahertz example. Let's try to uh, do the calculations. Okay, uh, so this is a calculator. Uh, I need to bring this calculator. Okay. 1 over 20 megahertz. 1 divided by 20 mega. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is uh, 5 times to the power 8, right? So 50... Uh, 20, 1, 2, 3. This is nano, is it? Uh, 50 times 4. 2 to the power negative 7. So, this is a 200 nanoseconds. Means that nano is... Nano is what? Nano is... Uh, Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you guys have to look at these numbers. Yeah, so this is the one. So let's let's look at this number directly. Okay. Uh, it, it should be the right one. No problem. This is the same thing. Okay. So uh, let's try to look at this example. Given a micro C with 20 MHz crystal, calculate the time for one instruction cycle. So the solution is given, oscillator is given at 20 MHz. 
one clock cycle is of course is one one clock cycle is one over twenty megahertz, right? And then one instruction cycle is equivalent to four clock cycle. So from this question, it it wants how many how many instruction cycle for a single instruction cycle? How many uh we call that the clock cycle? Okay, sorry. So in one instruction cycle, so how many of them? So it has four clock cycle, right? So from here, one over to 20 megahertz here is times four because it's a four clock cycle. So, eh? oh yeah, this is one. So this is a 50 nanoseconds, which is this one. Times four is equivalent to 200 nanoseconds. It's the same thing that uh, we used the calculator just now. Right, so this is the answer. Okay, so you're going to look at the questions on use the 8 megahertz clock, and then uh, this one the answer is going to be 0 0.5. You're going to use the same formula, but the second one, the second one is different. The second one, you are given this one, which is the instruction cycle. You need to convert this one based on this value, based on this value, go back to the oscillator values so it means that the first question is going to use the same formula like this but the second one you have to start from the uh, final answer here going up to find the oscillator mode so i'm going to ask these questions in the quiz so you need to find out how to know to get these uh, values and then you can answer that one all right so the first one is like this the second one you have to go back this is just a mathematics okay next one for the pipe running, uh, uh, this is not going to be uh, the one that I'm going to concentrate this one. So we're going to learn about the term. Okay, the term here is about the power supply, circuit and reset. So this is just a term for you to understand. The first one, they call it brown out. Brown out is a dangerous condition when the microcontroller being turned off or power supply voltage drops to a minimum causing problems. So microcontroller usually has a built-in circuit for itself. So remember that just now I give you the example of a robot that working from A to B. So in the middle of the uh, walking, it hangs. There's a possibly the system is got a problem in so brown out means a dangerous condition when microcontroller being turned off or power supply voltage drops. So maybe the, the power supply drops inside the controller that cause a problem, then it hangs. So what you can do is you have to build a circuit for reset. That's why the master clear button just now, pin number one. You have to uh, put something like this. You have to give uh, uh, the switching. If you can remember there, the switching over here. This is going to be uh, zero volt over here. It should value is uh, five volt. So this is, must be a, a resistor over here. This is five volt. So this is the switch. Touch this one. When you hit this button, the microcontroller will be reset. Okay. So this is why they call it reset pins, marked as master clear, used for external reset if no brown out reset is possible. So uh, normally it can be used to reset your, your microcontroller. Okay, so these are the terms that we have. Okay, next one. Okay, this is the memory organizations uh, before uh, we go for the uh, end of the lecture. So the memory is the one that you need to understand the differences of them. So we have the ROM. The first one they call it the second one have the memory ram the eprom then this is the third one the one that you always use normally when you purchase a pc you want to upgrade your ram that is the ram okay where in this ram uh the 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 thing is it, when you for example right when you do your project and when you use this computer right most of the data is being saved in the ram not not say it's processed in the ram so once your computer is uh, accidentally shut down or being uh, turned off, the whole thing is going to be removed and you cannot recover it. The probably the words uh, that was different because that one's applications. That one can can find the last one. It's safest and then it try to ask you uh, whether that's the last uh, position before the the power trip something like that. So the RAM is a uh, random access memory. Okay, it consists of two types of register, which is the general purpose and special function registers. Uh. So this is the, the, the thing that most important one is not going to permanently save. Okay, it's not going to save anything. 
so it will be cleared when the power off when you power off your your microcontroller right then the whole thing inside the ram will be eliminated will be cleared will be cleared there's nothing there okay so that's why they have this ROM. this is a read only memory okay it is used to save program being executed so that's why when you write this is you write a program then you compile it to a hex file right so this file will be downloaded to the ROM. That's why they call it here. Use permanently to save program being executed. So you are a program in your micro C and then you compile it, you get this file, you can go into download or flash it or upload in the ROM. Okay. So it's also known as, that's why it's also known as a program memory. So because it saved the program. This memory is going to save your program. And then ROM is a flash technology and can contents be changed by providing special programming voltage 13 volt. So when you want to do the flash or you want to download the program to the ROM, you will require something else. For example, you have to connect this one to something else to give a 13 volt to the CPU, uh, to the microcontroller before you can start to burn, burn your program is like that. So this is a process initially before you can run your program. So this is actually another process where you have to download your hex file to the system. All right. And the third one they call EEPROM, which is near similar, similar to ROM, which is when you turn off your power, right? Both uh, ROM and EEPROM will still con the last value that it has it will not erase be erased like RAM it will totally safe so EEPROM is just like your memory card in your phone you have the memory card right so it means that if you take a pictures you click your pictures and then it's saved to your memory card which is your EEPROM and then if you turn off your phone the image is still there so that's why they call it similar to ROM able to permanently save okay However, the EEPROM can be changed during operation. So that's why when you run your program, you want to save a data, you can save the data inside your EEPROM. It's just like your uh, handphone. When your handphone is uh, working, right? Your Android is working. So when you click the applications to record an image, right? Then the image will be saved into the EEPROM, which is at the current process is still operating the, 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 the software, right? So it means that you can save the image inside your EEPROM. The difference is ROM is the one that you use to save your hex file for your program. But EEPROM is normally used to save a data when you run your program. So that's two different things. So you, let's say for example, you want to build a system that can go in, that can save a data for one whole day. Right? You want to, to measure the temperature and save the data. So that's why when you save the data, you're going to save it inside the EEPROM. You cannot save in RAM because once it's power off, all the data is gone. So you have to save over here. So over here, you have three types of memory, which you have to remember all this memory. The differences and the function of it is about the ROM, the RAM, and the EEPROM. Okay, so the rest is talking about the RAM. Uh, the RAM register, this is about the register that are going to play around. So the RAM is the one that we're going to set the value because it has the two, which is the general purpose register and the special function register. This is the one that we are going to play when you set your microcontroller. This is going to be shown uh, in, the, in, the, in the micro C program. And this is what we're going to look at it in the next chapter. So this is more related to the, the, the general purpose register and special branch register. So it's, this is the one. And then the last one, uh, you can look at the RAM again. Again just now. This is the RAM just now. Just now. The RAM is also uh, related to the uh, pins. Because this is the name they call it pot. There's a register, RAM, name, Part. This part is going to reflect the pins outside there. So the RAM is going to be 8 bits and each other bit is representing this pin. So this is a 
grandfather parts. They call it the names. This is the part. So we are going to look at this example uh, on when you are doing the programming. Eh? So each microcontroller has one or more registers called port connected to micro C, micro C pins, which is, can be working as input or output. The higher number of input or pins, lower current can be supplied to it. So this is related to the power, power and current. Okay. So, and then the last one is uh, each I.O. pods, okay, I.O. pin this one, is controlled by another special function registers, they call it trice. So, trice and pod is related to each other. So, we are going to learn this one in the programming. Okay, let's uh, finish this chapter first. Then we're going to do some ex exercises on the quiz. Let's answer the quiz then. Thank you very much.